This is how you can create this distressed text effect in DaVinci Resolve. If you stay for the entire tutorial, you'll be able to see how to edit this distressed text effect in every way you can to get the best effect for your projects or whatever you're making as possible. If you want the project files for this, just click the first link in the description. So first, what you want to do is just go up to the effects tab and then type up fusion composition, drag that into the timeline, right click it and then press open in fusion page. So what we want to do is press shift space and then add a background node and then with this background node connect this to media out so now you should see a black screen in the viewer what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna make this background white and now press shift space and get a text plus node move that up here go into the text and then type in whatever you want so i'm gonna type in let's say ristol distressed Sure. And now we can see uh, the text is white, which is hard to see. So what you're going to do is go into the color and then make this black. Press OK. And now we can see it. So now I'm going to just change these fonts to make it look a little bit better. All right, there we go. I just made this little design here. And now press shift space and add a very blur node. This means that you can, you'll be able to blur out a specific part of this text, which is perfect for what we need. So just hold shift and slot it right in. And now press shift space once again and add a rectangle node. So after you have your rectangle node, uh, just connect that into the variable -er and make sure you're connecting it into the green triangle of the variable. -er. If it goes to the blue one, then just disconnect it again and make sure, make sure to connect it to the green one. So now, as we can see, if we just zoom in here, we can see that if we go to the very blur increase the blur it's getting blurred but then go into the rectangle and then change the center you can see that it's only getting blurred where the rectangle is so wherever the rectangle goes it gets blurred so now we can see the edges is a little bit harsh it looks weird so what we're gonna do is go into the soft edge property of this rectangle increase it and that instantly softens it out look at that um so i'm just gonna make it 0.03 three four i guess and i'm going to go into the rectangle and i'm just going to make this blur affect this part of the text so let's quickly do that so let's decrease the width that looks pretty good i also want to change the angle a little bit so i'm just going to decrease the angle to make it a little bit diagonal as you can see it's it's a uh, diagonal now which is pretty cool now that we have this little blur effect go into the very blur the blur is a little bit too high i think yeah maybe this is a little better um and then quality for quality, I think we can just make this like two and then change it from multi box to defocus just to have a little bit more of a realistic kind of blur. I'm going to go into the rectangle and actually increase the soft edge just a bit more just to have a bit more of the varied blur look and then increase the blur size. A oh, wow. Not too much. Uh, increase the very blur just a little bit more. Perfect. Okay. So I'll keep blur size at four. Now what we want to do is press shift space and add a grain node, just a regular grain node, not a film grain. There's, I know there's, when you type up grain, there's film grain, there's another film grain, and then there's just a grain. What we want is just the grain. So press add, hold shift and slot it in right after the very blur. And now we can see automatically the background is getting blurred. It has like a little texture on it, which is honestly a very nice texture. It's a very nice look, but we want to only affect the blur of the text. So go into the grain, go up here and increase the power to whatever you want. Uh, this just controls how strong the noise is. I'm going to make it 10, I think. And then go into the spread tab and then select this last point. Go into the out and make it zero and then press enter. And now what that will do is only affect the blurry parts. As you can see, instead of affecting the entire image, it only affects the blurred section. Now we're not done yet. This looks still a bit blurry. So what I'm gonna do is make it more grungy with a sharpened note. The problem with this is it's going to affect the background. So you have to know what you're gonna put in the background because it's gonna also sharpen that. But for this one, I think it's perfect. So let's press shift space and add a sharpen node, just this normal sharpen node with this bracket sharp. Press add, hold shift and slide it right in. Now you can see it's automatically getting sharpened like quite a lot. And then what you do is on this right hand panel, let's just increase the amount to, I don't know, 100, I guess. And you can see it's getting really, really grungy and just crazy. So what we want to do is because it's kind of strong, let's decrease the blend to about 
0.25, I think. And what's super cool about this is you can deselect one of these colors and you can get like some cool, cool effects. These are like, like film type effects. That's what it looks like at least. The main problem with this effect is that because it's like the sharpen node, anything they have in a background or like if you have different colors, it might not work as well. Let me actually check. So if I make this red and then let's make this, I don't know, blue. Okay, it works, but you can see a lot of the green. So it works best when it's just, you know, black and white. But now let's make this green look even more grungier than it looks right now. And to do that, we just need one more node, which is the color corrector node. So what you want to do is just press shift space and add a color corrector node. This is going to mess around with a lot of the colors. So just be careful what you have on your scene. But with this color corrector, go into it. And down here in contrast, just max that. And then on lift, just make this just the lowest you can. And then on gamma, also just lower this just a little bit. Not too much or else it's just going to do that, whatever it's doing there. But just lower this a little bit. And then for the brightness, you can also lower this if you want. Um, but it also introduces some of the yellows, which is a little bit interesting. I just want it to be more bluish because I like that color. And now if you go into the rectangle, move it around, and now you got this awesome effect. But we're not done yet. We are not done yet. There's still two more variations you could do. So this blur is blurring like everywhere. It's going in all directions. But what you could do if, if you go to the very blur, and then you uncheck lock X, Y. And then what you do is on Y, you just make this zero. The blur only goes sideways. So going into the rectangle and then you move it, it only goes sideways, which achieves a super cool effect. But if you go into the very blur again and you make the X blur size zero and then the Y blur size max, go into the rectangle. And now you have this cool effect too. It's actually sick. It's going upward. So it's like, it's stretching the text, which gives this amazing effect. Anyways, subscribe, make sure you subscribe and I'm gonna see you later.